Welcome, fellow nerds, to our Timeline to Judgment Day. We are getting ready to review Terminator Genesis. And remember, if you uh, like what you see here, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and uh, you know, tell your friends. And ring the bell, if you like, so you can be notified of our future videos. Would you ring my bell? Ring my bell. I don't think I would. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Skynet. All right, so let's go ahead and break down Terminator Genesis, or as uh, we lovingly call it, Terminator 3 Part 2, uh, because this was kind of supposed to reset the universe, um, because Terminator 3 was uh, terrible, except for um, Dave loved it. It's his favorite movie. Um, <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> and then uh, there was Terminator Salvation, which we thought it had some good parts, and we all kind of think it was better than 3, but still, it was kind of panned. Uh, a lot of people didn't care for it. Um, I guess uh, one of the biggest complaints, why well, wasn't there time travel? I mean, I was kind of cool with it, but now we had to have, like, all, all of the time travel in this movie. Uh, backwards, forwards, I mean, you name it. So. But you, you can't have time travel in every movie if, you know, first of all, the idea's going to get tired. Second of all, you can't really move forward if you're always messing up the timeline. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Um, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I mean, yeah, so this uh, this movie wasn't the worst. Out of all of them, that still, uh, that still belongs to Terminator 3. Good job, guys. That was a bang-up movie. But Genesis still has its issues. It, um, it's got some what could have been decent actors given very poor, uh, maybe not meant for the roles. They're given a very terrible script um, to work with. But then you also had a mix of like just bad actors in general. Yeah, and you know they tried to fit too much into it. Oh yeah, it's like we we kind of joked about it in an earlier video. Well, just send another Terminator to that same <laughs> right. point in time and have it, you know. <laughs> and they were kind of doing that, and <clears throat> you know they really didn't explain things. It's like okay, Judgment Day no. switched back to nineteen ninety seven, but then it didn't, and they really didn't go into too much detail how that. What happened to change that? You know what? I think they just, uh, you know, the, the folks who um, uh, directed and produced this, this was uh, directed by Alan Taylor, um, famously made uh, or directed uh, Thor The Dark World, the best That's Thor movie of all. Infamously. Not famously. <laughs> infamously. <laughs> yeah. Um, infamously directed the best Thor movie of all time, Thor The Dark World. Um, it was... Uh, Produced by, at the time, this was a company called uh, Skydance Productions. They no longer own the rights because, of course, this is Terminator, and that's it passes on to a new uh, production company every single uh, movie, and uh, Paramount. Um, uh, but we'll be talking a little bit more about uh, Paramount's involvement later on. They actually were kind of cool with this movie, uh, with the things that they did. But, um, yeah, so it, it was just kind of a weird hodgepodge, kind of a mess, uh, like, all the way through. Um we're led to believe that there was everybody in the resistance and everybody at Skynet seemed to know what was going to happen as if this was just an ongoing cycle that just kept repeating itself over and over again. So, okay, we're going to send back a Terminator, but we're going to send back a Terminator earlier. We're going to send back a Terminator. Even We're going to send back four Terminators. I, I don't even know. I mean... We're going to send Pops back to the Old <laughs> West and he's going to have a saloon. Was that, was that Jet Li? I don't know. Who oh, the T-1000? Uh, T-1000. The no, that was not Jet Li. Um, I did not write down who played him, though. But um, speaking of who played who, uh, there was uh, one actor in this movie in particular. I um, I know he was cast in there to... This was supposed to be like a blow-up movie for him. And he, and he was in another movie. He was in like uh, the Die Hard... I don't know what it's called. Die yeah, he Hard, was in the Russian one. The Russian one. Yeah. Uh, number five. The and Jai, his name is Jai Courtney. Movie. And I don't think he's a bad actor. He just d doesn't seem to have it. Not for this movie. No. Um, I don't know if they are trying to make this movie, like, kind of bring it back to more of a serious tone, which I would kind of hope they would do that. Um, Salvation definitely had more of a serious tone, and I really appreciated that. Uh, this is, it was like they were they were adding in, like, a bunch of goofball crap again. Oh, which, him smiling so much? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, once is enough. I, I get it. I get the joke, okay, it's a throwback to Terminator 2, T-800s can't smile, okay, cute guys, whatever, but 
Like, I mean, Jai Courtney was a terrible Kyle Reese. He was the Kyle Reese equivalent to John Connor from T3. <laughs> he definitely they was. They should make a movie together. They should, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> they, should, they should make a movie called Terminators. <laughs> and, you know, I, you guys disagree with me on this. I thought Amelia Clark did a great job. See, I thought, with me, she, there were scenes I was like, damn, she nailed it. And there so, was other ones where I was like, what is going on? Yeah. Like, was she having some personal issues while this was filming? I really didn't uh, get it because there was... She I lost her she... dragons, Keith. Okay? Was it was a pre- very tough moment. Was this pre-dragon or... No, this is during the same time. See, I don't know when... I'm not... I don't watch Game of Thrones. Mm. So I don't know when it started. Yeah, we yeah, don't, was, we don't get it during either. the same time. I yeah. mean, I guess I made a bet with you that I would watch them and I still need to do that. So. No, not anymore. No? No. No, it's You're good. off the table. I think you should still watch them. Just not the last season. It's not the last the episode. Last really? It's like Lost. You still oh. got to see the end. Do you, though? You do. Because <laughs> you're going to think, if you don't see it, you're going to think, I bet it's good. <laughs> and then uh. you'll see the end and go, man, everyone was right. Uh. Man, I wish that would happen in this movie. Yeah, so but speaking, of Terminator, <laughs> speaking of Terminator <laughs> Genesis, the movie we're supposed to be talking about, good job. We're expert Tangent. movie. Uh, hey, reviewers. I brought her back. Man. We could have done that seamless, man. Good job. Boom. Ow. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, um, fun fact. Uh, did you know that your favorite Captain Marvel, probably not the best Captain Marvel, uh, Brie Larson was supposed to be playing Sarah Connor? I did not know that. Yeah, I do cool. love Brie Larson. I think she would have been great for this. Yeah, I think she would have been too. I'm I more troubled by your saying she's not the best Captain Marvel because she's the only Captain yeah, Marvel. Yeah, that's what oh, I was worried about. No, no, Zachary no, no. Levy is Shazam. Uh, yeah. yeah, but still uh, Captain Marvel. No, no. They lost mm. those rights. <laughs> I agree. I this agree is the video where we get off track a lot. Right. <laughs> Just like this movie. <laughs> that yeah, we're we're get off track. Wait, let's jump to the future. Right? Okay, so we were, we were kind of discussing this offline because... Um, there were some things that just did not quite make sense. You kind of heard us reference it already. Uh, the timeline is a mess, okay? And that's the whole theme, the ongoing theme of all of these movies is every single time somebody messes with time travel, they're screwing up the time stream. Um, so I was talking to the guys about this uh, um, before, and my thought process is if they hadn't time traveled back to the past in the original movie, The Terminator then it could be, it could very well be that uh, the singularity of Skynet, you know, uh, gaining sentience and taking over, it might not have happened in 1997 like it did in T1, T2, and part of uh, what was going to happen in Genesis. So it could be that they actually accidentally sort of sped up their own development, which uh, could, you know, be why they weren't as smart. And uh, this is my own personal theory. Now, we obviously have not seen uh, Dark Fate yet, and, you know, we would not spoil it for you guys, even if we had. Uh, unlike, you know, some YouTube reviewers. Some? Yeah. Many. Uh, but here's my theory, is uh, I think that um, Legion, which is going to be the uh, the Skynet of Dark Fate, was actually the original, the first, before they decided to start screwing around with time travel. Does it have any X-Men in it? No, I don't believe Legion. So. Just Xavier's son. Just that, that's it. Right. So Aubrey Plaza's in this movie then. I, I hope wish. so. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> she oh she would be amazing as a Terminator. Uh, you know we're totally going again. off course again. <laughs> Just like this movie. Yes, yeah. there's a theme. There's a oh, theme here, yeah. folks. <clears throat> okay, so. I liked it though. I... You know there was some stuff I liked about it. You know I think the battle for the time machine was pretty yeah, pretty it was cool. Pretty decent. It was yeah. Well done. Oh yeah. You know, the um, Matt Smith being uh, Skynet uh, was... That was unusual. Kind of weird. It's a weird I'm choice. I'm Matt Smith fan. I'm not... I don't know. Just He's weird. the worst doctor. He was the worst doctor. Who? Sorry, Matt. He wasn't a very good Skynet either. No, he, he really wasn't. No. And he's going to be in a Star Wars movie. Is he? Oh. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's going to be in Rise of the Skywalker. Or Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, he's Rise going to be... Uh, you know, I'm thinking a young Palpatine, but that's from a, our next Once video. Once again, we're getting yeah. off track. Our next video. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's um, try and stay focused here. So I did like a couple of things that they did. Okay, so I first off, I will I will state this overall. I'm not a fan of when they throw too many jokes into what's supposed to be a dark sci-fi horror thriller robot killer movie. Mm-hmm. But 
I did like when they're uh, when they're being chased by the um, what I uh, think is the worst version of the T one thousand. The fact that a movie made in the uh, late eighties, early nineties was had better graphics, I think, for the T one thousand. But anyway, uh, that's I'll talk about that in a minute. The chasing when they're being chased and driving in that truck. Did you guys notice that they crash into a DeLorean? No, I did not. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of a little. That is hilarious. I thought I like it was pretty it. funny. I did appreciate that. I'm like, okay, I'll give you guys that one. That was pretty good. All right. So we, you know, we've got Arnold wearing his sunglasses again. Pops. And we got Sarah saying the line, "Come, Come with, with me, me if, if you want to live. live." So mark those off on your uh, if you're playing the game with us. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but they do dive more into. Um, the whole time travel aspect. Like, they kind of talk more about the science of it, or lack thereof, um, and they actually explain why uh, they why they, the uh, Terminators or the machines or whatever it needs to be wrapped in living tissue and why you can't go with clothes or weapons. So they actually describe, uh, they kind of break it down that going through the time machine, if you're wearing clothes or if, you're, if you have a weapon on, you would be like putting tinfoil in a microwave. And I thought that was a really good description. I like that they're they're finally breaking it down. So they're taking these aspects that have been part of the the Terminator uh, franchise, part of the lore for you know years, and they're finally finally saying you know finally putting their foot down, saying okay, this is why it's like this. Okay, it's not just some made up bullshit. Here's a, an actual reason for it. So I, I liked that. When you have that, it gives the story depth. I yeah, mean, it I does. think that's what Marvel does too. They just give you enough to think, all right, that's feasible. Yeah. And then you can go move forward. But if you get yep. no explanation or just a shoddy one at that, then you're more like, eh, I don't know, man. I think it adds a lot. So another thing that we were talking about um, earlier on uh, is the kind of shot-by-shot uh, remakes that they did for this movie. So they kind of recreate a couple of uh, parts of the original Terminator. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are good. Some are not so good. Um, I had mentioned that Paramount, as a production company, did some kind of cool things for this movie. And one of them might not seem like a lot, but for all of our fans that happen to be uh, sneakerheads, you're going to really appreciate the fact that Paramount actually got Nike to completely shut down their production just so they could produce 25 pairs of Nike Vandals, the same exact shoe that um, their actor for uh, Kyle Reese wore in the original 84 movie. Uh, They did not want to cheat their, uh, their viewers. They wanted to make sure that um, this wasn't just a look-like shoe. They wanted to make sure that this was actual, the actually the shoe. Going the extra mile. Yeah, they went the extra mile extra, on that uh, one part. I wonder how <laughs> yeah. much that cost them to shut down Nike. I don't think they cared. <laughs> yeah, probably. I don't know. They were about to lose the uh, um, lose the rights to the movie again. I think that's why they pumped this thing out. Yeah, it kind of seemed that way. Mm-hmm. You know, there's... One of the things that I was thinking about during this movie, too... We talked about Judgment Day was kind of 1997 at the beginning of this movie. Mm -hmm. But then it changed because when Kyle was coming through the time stream, he gained memories from his younger self. Right. Which really, I don't think, made too much sense. Because even though you're traveling through time, you're still in a separate body. Right. So you really wouldn't be gathering memories. But, so when we see that Sarah and Pops built their own time machine, (coughs) they decided to go forward in 2017. John hasn't been born yet, so he's going to be younger. Mm-hmm. So they've kind of changed the timeline, but as we know, when John comes back later in the movie after Skynet has infiltrated all the nanobots in him, he's still the same age. So do yeah. they go back in time? She gets pregnant in 2017, so goes back to 1984 and drops him off so he can be the right age? It's like they're cherry-picking like um, what... Uh, what they want to change in the future and what they don't. Like, I mean, at this point, the timeline is such an utter mess from all of the meddling that I don't even know what what happened, what didn't happen. I mean, um, clearly John knows uh, this version of John Connor. Um, as he's uh, talking about everything again, This is he's still being the prophet, knowing everything, and kind of rattling everything off, saying, oh, yeah, this is what you're going to see on the computer. This is what is going to be in the building. And everybody's like, oh, he's right. Oh, yeah, you're right again, John. How do you know all this stuff? (laughs) Oh, I cheat. Uh, Because Sarah Connor actually told me all of this stuff. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah. So, And he kind of, he seems to know, this version John seems to know that Kyle is his father. And so he knows that he has to send Kyle back. 
So we already know that this has already happened. So this is almost like the the second round, I guess, uh, of or the third round or something of sending Kyle back to the past again to make sure that John is born. And uh, we see um, before they even uh, infiltrate the Skynet uh, laboratory, we see them sending back the T eight hundred to go back. Yeah. Um, so, but but yeah, uh, the the timeline is such a mess that. Uh, the fact that they can now jump forward in time, which I thought they'd established wasn't possible, but they, now they apparently did, is. But yeah, now they can. Yeah. And one of the nice things that they did is, uh, what's his name? Uh, Miles Dyson. Oh, he's His back. kid was part of Genesis. Yeah. He was yeah. helping invent it. And then what they did, which, <clears throat> when you find out that John comes back and he's basically a Terminator, we'll, we'll call, I don't know if there, he has a model number. Yeah, the T-3000. But we see he is working with Genesis. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, cool. That's actually a great idea. He was sent back from Skynet to improve on it and mm-hmm. maybe get their technology better, faster. Mm-hmm. They never talk about it. They yeah. never do anything with that. It's just all... <laughs> yeah, I'm just here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got nanobots. <laughs> no, and the, Yeah, okay, so that was, that was the weird focus. Okay, so they show him talking to Miles Dyson and talking to... Um, what was Miles' son's name? I can't remember. I can't either. I should have wrote, written it down. But, yeah, they, they see them all talking, and they're telling John, man, it's great, everything. Again, he's still, like, a prophet now. He's talking about all, giving them all this great information, making sure that Skynet is a thing. But his main focus seems to be, A, on time travel, and, B, on the uh, liquid metal Terminators, which, why those specifically? It's kind of a... Well, weird it's thing so, to jump to. You know, it's so Pops could say, you know, you don't have to worry about them. They don't have a chip. And then he falls in it with his chip. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, a, my God. I'm just an upgrade. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, this, yeah, this movie had, uh, had weird parts like that. Um, I did like, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I liked how um, they kind of brought back the idea that uh, magnets can... Uh, kind of like disrupt the, yeah. uh, these. I I don't want to call them liquid metal. Uh, I don't really know what, the the TX and now this T three thousand. I guess they're more in line with nanobots because they mm-hmm. definitely looked different. They had a T one thousand. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the, the beginning of the movie, and they clearly form and they function differently. So I'm assuming it's a different sort of alloy, a different sort of sort of material. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it is kind of cool to see how magnets interfere with them again, but when they, uh, flip on the, uh, what do you call it? MRI machine. Yeah, the MRI <clears throat> machine. Magnetic resonance. Yeah. Thank you for breaking it down. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know a little bit about everything and a lot about nothing. Uh, yeah. You, you know, one of the things as I was watching this too, when the bus flipped, how the hell did Kyle Reese survive? He was not buckled oh. in. Oh, he would have been just jacked up in that thing. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm, all, I'm all for craziness going on. Got to suspend a little bit of disbelief. Yeah. But that was like the equivalent of in T3 when he's got the rocket launcher and, and, <laughs> and Kate Brewster is, yeah, right. And she's, <laughs> she's right in it. I mean, like, yeah, kind of the same idea. And it's almost like as the further they get away from James Cameron's, because he seemed to put a lot of thought in, mm-hmm. you know, how can I make this as believable as possible? And mm-hmm. how can I add these things? And I thought it was really well done. And as they get further and further away, just more, they're just like, we just have to do crazy stuff. It doesn't take much. And not much. explain it. Exactly. It doesn't take much to make it seem, oh, that's feasible, like mm-hmm. like we were talking about mm-hmm. before. It doesn't take much, you know? Just a little bit of, like, oh, make it just a little bit believable, and people will excuse it even if it's not. Because yeah. that <clears> seems like, all right, that fits with the with the plan. Not in such a bad way that we're talking about right now. Like, <laughs> he's dead. He's splattered on the road. Yeah. You know? He hasn't impregnated Sarah yet. John's never being born. He can't be the nanotech Terminator. Right. It's all... that He just ruined the whole movie with that bus flip. The right, whole right. Terminator series is done. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, did they do that oh, for yeah, real? Because so... I know in, ba- in the Batman movie, Back to Batman, <laughs> um, where they flip the truck, in the semi-truck. Is um, that, are you asking that's they did possible? That, they did that for real. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah so did. did they do the bus for real? That's what I'm asking. Good I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. not sure. I mean, I'm sure they had the budget to do it. Yeah. Um, and speaking of, like, some of the budget things, one of the good things that I liked about this movie 
was when John was fighting with the mm-hmm. nanotech. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of that, he was fighting pops and doing stuff, and he was using it to his advantage, kind of like the T one thousand from T two. Like when he got thrown to the wall, and he just kind of turned around without. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. kind of a lot neat. of that, but using it to his advantage. And I was like, okay, they are learning. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, not you know learning enough to ever kill you know one human, <laughs> right? But or one obsolete model robot. Yes. <laughs> well, they got a lot of humans, just not the right ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you okay. know what? Um, I am okay with the explanation of. Why Arnold looked old, old in this movie? Yeah, I'm okay with that. See, I, that. I get it. Exactly what I'm talking right. about. I, I am good with the fact that yes, it's living flesh. Yes, it does age. He's been there since since uh, the 70s. Okay, cool. I can buy that. Fine. Um, and I assume they're probably going to use uh, the uh, similar explanation in Dark Fate. And okay, I'm totally cool with it. That'd be awesome if it was Pops again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if this is going to, you know, in the in the vein of, like, how these movies seem to go, I feel like it's going to be a different T-800 or T-850 or whatever yeah. each time. Yeah, this is the seventh I mean, one they've sent back. They they do come off an assembly line, Dave. And, well, they, they're, Even they're trying, know that. <laughs> you know, the seventh one they sent back, and they're trying to send them back, like, uh, mm-hmm. return it. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> like, these don't work. As I was watching this, too, I, I really think they need to change up their plan. If you're going to send them back, don't like just send a robot to kill that one person. Like find out where they're at, and, kill and then like blow up the whole building. <laughs> so have it be like a terrorist act. What what is it with uh, with the time travel? Like it, they, it, people just seem to show up wherever. Like how do they? Is there any sort of uh, direction? Did they explain that? Because I must have missed that. Did they ever explain how they choose the location of where they get dumped off at? I don't know. I know they choose the t- the city. They chose Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. That's all I. I, I don't That's know how they, they choose to put them on the highway. It's probably like <laughs> GPS on the phone. You can only get so close. Yeah, right. It put you one block over, like they, like I said, when they dropped them on the highway. That was not very conspicuous, mm-hmm. in, inconspicuous. <laughs> Where were you? I was stuck in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you, but I couldn't uh, get to you. I made a funny. <laughs> I had twenty years to wait. To find where you were, but and I missed it. Speaking of the best line, uh, my favorite line in the entire movie, that you were talking about. If someone asks, <laughs> uh, yeah. You? As a T eight hundred and lack the medic skills to appear as anyone else. That's him. Let's go. If someone asks, who I um, what was it? Oh, about I know basically says, that. how do we know you're the real T eight hundred? He goes, yeah. I'm a T eight hundred. I lack the ability to take other forms. <laughs> and, and I lack the ability like, to appear in other forms. He's like, it's him. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that was the best scene in the movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, such a nerd. <laughs> That's good stuff. That was That's good. why I texted it to you guys. That's why. It was so what, good. What is, uh, speaking of the this uh, DA, what is with their fascination of trying to make sure that uh, that mating is happening? Like, uh, the, yeah. the T850 is. Have you tra- mated yet? <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoa, hey man, like, slow down. Whoa, buddy, like, I mean, you were doing just that. Do you need some pointers? <laughs> <laughs> doing it in Terminator 3, you, uh, um, your levity is good for mating or whatever. So I'm just like, dude, you're killing the mood. <laughs> just, just, just let it go, man. It'll take care of itself. <laughs> you you must mate Sarah Connor so you can birth John. <laughs> And then we will send him back in time so he is of proper age <laughs> to fight Skynet. Right. Oh, man. But there was another first for Genesis. Okay. A post credit scene. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, there was. Yeah. I was happy to see that. I love post credit scenes. I do, too. And I was so excited because I had not seen this movie until two days ago. <clears throat> I kind of refused to kind of stop seeing Terminator movies. Three really turned me off. I saw Salvation. I wasn't very happy with it. When Genesis came out, I was like, no. But I watched it. For this. For a timeline, you know, to Judgment Day. For you guys. I did it for you. But I, I liked Thank it. Way to take one for the team, man. <laughs> You're, right. You're welcome. I didn't watch it, did you? I was making the, all this up. Yeah. <laughs> did that really happen in the movie, man? <laughs> <laughs> but you know all this post credit scene really did was tell us what we already know uh, it's gonna survive yeah. yeah of course it was supposed to be setting up a trilogy right this was supposed to be oh, a trilogy yeah. um, yeah. they were also hoping to make a new TV series off of this too 
What, how can you do that simultaneously? They had a lot of big hopes for this. They thought this was going to be... Um, they honestly treated this like they were going to reset the Terminator universe. Um, and they were going to make a, a brand new, um, uh, you know, three movies uh, out, out of this. They're going to make a TV series where they're going to introduce all of the new machines that uh, um, Skynet was producing and um, set it in the, the new timeline that had been created. That was the idea anyway, but... Um, when it turned out that uh, people hated this movie, uh, that none of that happened. And um, all of the uh, the rights reverted back to James Cameron. Which is a good thing. Uh, Which hopefully means good things for Dark Fate. Hopefully, hopefully he was hopefully. He hopefully he was really involved. I, I like Tim Miller too. I, well, I heard so. he um, he uh, reviewed all of the scripts. That's oh, yeah. what what I've read so far, yeah. yeah. Um, unlike this movie, which apparently he didn't have a lot of involvement. It showed. But ratings, I mean, uh, you know, we've oh. talked about it for every one. We've now seen all of the Terminator movies, again, sometimes. <laughs> so ratings in, like, in order? In order, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, I go with T2, mm -hmm. T1, uh, this one. I like Genesis, Salvation, and then T3. So I put it as uh, T2, T1, uh, Salvation, Genesis T3, so I swap uh, Genesis and Sal Salvation. I like Salvation more than this one. Good show. Yeah, I, I agree with Doug. I, I had Salvation just a little bit ahead of Genesis. I just thought it was more in line with where I thought the franchise should go. Yeah. More in the future, more of the Resistance fighting them instead of getting back into <clears throat> sending everything in the kitchen sink robots. back in time. Yeah. So. I think they should go in different directions with this. You you know that I mean Doug showed me the timeline for the Terminator series. And there's just so many different ways they can go. And mm -hmm. this is not like, in my mind, you know how I like the continuous story? And that's why I like the MCU so much, because everything was linked together. I don't think this would be the case. I think they can go off in different directions and not have anything linked, except for, like, the basic story. And they could do that as long as mm -hmm. they do a good, you know, make, make it a good story. Right. It doesn't have to be one big, you know, serialized sort of production. Right. As long as they make good movies. If they decide, hey, we're going to make, this is an offshoot of when John was... 17 years younger, because <laughs> his parents jump forward in time. <laughs> if they, as long as they do a good job with it, it's fine. Yeah, good and, story. And they've just been trying to keep rebooting this franchise, and instead of doing what made T1 and T2 so great, the story, they're just trying to throw you know fan service into it. They're trying yeah, to they add more, like, hey, if one robot coming back in time is great, three is going to be even Three is going to be great. I almost broke on my capote there. <laughs> I wanted to say... Uh, didn't you, um, you're a big Game of Thrones fan. Yeah, more or less. And, uh, you were saying that this is... Yeah, Amelia so... Amelia Clark would be the so, second? So we had Amelia Clark in here as, uh, Sarah Connor. And, uh, we haven't reviewed it. I don't know if we're going to, uh, you know, eventually get to it, maybe. But, um, for those of you who, uh, have ever seen the, um, Terminator TV series that was on, uh, Fox, I believe. Um, it was called, uh, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles. And um, Sarah Connor was played by um, our actress from Game of Thrones who played Queen Cersei, uh, which is uh, kind of interesting. So we've had uh, two Game of Thrones stars uh, play Sarah Connor. Um, Lena Headey was Lena Headey, yeah. yeah. So I, uh, real quick, I'm not going to get too deep into uh, that because that series is also another mess to the timeline that's... It's a whole beast in and of itself. But the series has Summer Glau on it. <clears throat> it does. So and we shared a moment. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Keith was there. So I uh, I actually true, did not like Lena Headey, Lena Headey as, uh, as Sarah Connor in that. Uh, I thought she was, um, I don't know. It's not, not, well, good, then, not a good uh, fit. The Sarah Connor you like better took care of her in Game of Thrones. Yeah, true. I and a lot of other people in King's Landing. I never <laughs> yeah. saw the Sarah Connor Chronicles. It's hard to say, but I, I've never seen it. I was interested, but it was only on two years. Yeah, two I don't seasons. know if it's on Netflix or anything, but... I don't know. Um, I've got the DVDs. Oh. Well, well I have them now. Yeah. And you know how quick I watch them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like next uh, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next movie is going to be um, Dark Fate. That is coming out real soon, so uh, stay tuned. We're going to do an in-theater review, and uh, we might end up, depending on how it goes, we might end up doing another sit-down uh, and uh, break it down for you guys You know, later on. We don't want to spoil it again like some YouTubers are doing. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. Uh, but yeah, so um, let us know what you think 
about this mo- about these uh, movies kind of uh, tell us your uh, your order that you would put them in uh, the way that you rate them put them down in the comments below and uh, make sure you uh, watch all of the uh, all the videos that we've done in our timeline to Judgment Day and uh, you know again make sure you like this and share it with your friends yeah and we will see you at the theater.